Now, good evening, everyone. It's lovely to see you all here. And it's lovely to see some warmer weather. I think we can all agree. It's first show of spring. First show of spring. Makes a change. It's a little bit different. I mean, it was it was scary yesterday when I, I was I was driving home from work. I got home from work and it was still daylight. That was a that was a strange one. I'm not, not, not quite used to it. It was a, uh, it wasn't quite dark yet. Well, we've got still the, a little bit of light. We've got the week at the moment because obviously uh, the clocks don't change till the weekend. So we should be going out early in the morning in daylight, which has been absolutely lovely. I mean, the dawn's actually got up before me for a little while, but uh, so. But one of the things we're planning to do next week is is reinstate temporarily our dawn stories feature where we actually get out in the dawn and uh, bring you a show. So anyway, Ross is just dealing with some technical issues, so I'm going to crack straight on. One of the things we like to do at the beginning of shows is, is we just talk about what we call observations, things that we can learn from the countryside. And I want to spend a little bit of time today talking about natural law. Natural law is the one that, if you like, keeps us, keeps the world moving. It's the things that it makes, makes plants grow at the pace plants want to grow. It makes animals move at the pace that they want to move. It's what drives the clouds. It's what means that birds know how to fly halfway around the world without anyone showing them how to do it, which is amazing. It's why whales manage to swim all the way around some of the largest oceans without anyone showing them how to do it. They just know. It's the thing that makes the moon appear to rise and fall in the sky and get bigger and get smaller to wax and to wane. It's the thing that makes seasons follow each other. You know, from spring, as we've just noticed, which will move into summer, which will move into autumn and move into winter. It's the thing that tells us that wherever we are right now, it's not our own position. It's the thing that determines, you know, that there's a time for all things. There's a time for being happy. There's a time for being sad. There's a time for being angry. There's a time for being at peace. Everything fits in to that natural law. And one of the things within that natural law is the cycle of life and death and the fact that you know, we have this physical form which becomes into being and we live our lives until we come to the end and something determines that we have a spark that gives us life now if you look outside in our countryside you can see that all the time every day all year and there's so much we can learn but sometimes the examples of that land right in our gardens they land right in our world and in our lives on whatever different scale now we had an amazing example of that the other day in our pond i was actually out at the pond with my granddaughter and she was having a good splash around as she does and i noticed a couple of lighter patches at the bottom of the pond now I'm not going to tell you any more about that at the moment. We've got a little video that we put together and we're going to play that. So this is the, oh, the little bit we had our members on a Facebook group. We gave them a little hint as to what was coming because this is a change of program. So as soon as Ross has uh, sorted out the technology, here's the video. Hello. We found some newt in our pond and that's obviously good except for the fact that when we found them they had died which you might think is not so good but do you know it's actually still really good we keep talking about cycles and having found some newts this time of year in our pond is actually really really cool because that means that they've spawned now if you have a look at the newts i've got here there's a male and two females. Now, we know that they're smooth newts because they're the orange bellies. So the male, which this one here, you can see is a very, very orange belly. And I've got two females, one 
we can see here from above and one that we can see here from below. And again, you can see that orange belly. So anyway, why have they died in our pond? They've probably died in our pond because they have spawned, which is one of those natural things with life. It uses up a huge amount of energy. And to be fair, once they have laid their spawn, they've done their job. You know, it's ultimately the responsibility of every adult to leave one surviving offspring to replace it. And that will keep the population stable. So what do they actually do? Well, when they've, they've paired up, or male and female have been in close proximity, the male will leave his sperm, if you like, in the water, and the female will then swim onto it, and the sperm will stick to her belly and fertilize her eggs. It's funny, quite often, and she can actually take on board the sperm of more than one male. But when she's, her eggs are fertilized, She'll then actually take them out and wrap them up in leaves in the water. And she'll leave a large number of eggs, but probably only one to two percent of those, uh, if you like, tadpoles as they become, will actually survive till adulthood. But as I said, she only needs two to replace her and her partner and the population will remain stable. So why is this fantastic? Because that means that in our pond, we're going to have newts growing. That means we've got the balance right. That means that the planting is right. That means that the, the quality of the water is right because newts don't stay in the water all year round. They only come back to breed. And if that wasn't right, they wouldn't do so. They're largely nocturnal. They spend the day in damp places and then come out and do all their activities at night. But you know, having dead adults in our pond means we have life and that natural cycle is going to continue to repeat. Now, for those of you that were here last week, you'll see that we're, we're, we're quite proud of our pond. And that just yes. was a bit of a icing on the cake, almost, to, uh, to see that. It is, sure. absolutely. It was a couple of years ago, we had dragonflies, and very much the same thing, uh, if you like, happens. They come in and, and, and do their thing, and then they also die. But it is that cycle of life and it's the way it was meant to be it's the way that it is and we should celebrate that because one thing kind of like dying away gives us another so well we just have one comment come back in the chat the sounds in your garden are awesome well thank you it's I... it's it's a trick to try and get the water about right so it sounds good but doesn't sound like someone's peeing in your pond it's the it's it's getting it right but normally we haven't had to do that for a little while because my nieces and nephews have come round and organised it for us. They have. You know, you get, when you get the beach, you get the pebbles with the holes in. Well, we got one or two really large pebbles with holes in and we actually use those. We've just literally got a hose coming and when we just balance it right and it's, you can get it just spot on. But every time we get it right, say one of our grandchildren comes round and rearranges it for us. So uh, Not one of my grandchildren. And entertained. No, you haven't got any yet. No, my no. nieces and nephews. Yeah, absolutely. But you haven't got children yet. No, not, not yet. So you kind of need the one. Yeah. Anyway, we probably really ought to move on to the rooks, I feel. Yes. Well, following on to our next special guest at the end of next month is Chris Scaife, who is the Raven Master at the Tower of London. So building up to that, we're doing our weekly uh, COVID. And you did the crow last week. No, I did the magpie last week. You did the magpie did last week. Magpie you did last the magpie week. last week. We, 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 again, we, we are prone to making a schedule and then every now and then something will happen and we'll go right off topic. And as we've actually got magpie, where I was sat there filming the, the newts, I literally about 
10 meters above my head, we've got a magpie nest, uh, which has been a bit exciting. I kind of like mag magpies. So we're, uh, we've got magpies in the, in the garden. So we decided to change the routine because they're nesting and we put them in the, in the program. So anyway, we're, we're back on schedule this week and Ross is going to do his section of Rooks. Shut yes. up, Simon, you're waffling. So, Rooks are unlike a lot of the other corvids. They are very, very much pack animals, almost, if you think about it. Um, they travel around in groups. Can anyone name what that group is in the chat for me? Can anyone name what a group of Rooks is called? Didn't that come up in one of our previous episodes? Didn't we do a, a quiz has. on 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 uh, collective nouns? That's the phrase, collective nouns. It is not a flock. No. It's not parking. A parking of rooks. <laughs> it's not. It's not a murder, is it? It's not a murder either. No. <laughs> it's a murder of crows. That's crows, isn't it? Yeah. It is a parliament. Ah, oh, that's something. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I get that. Absolutely. Anyway, it is a parliament of rooks, but that's not what their breeding pairs are called or breeding groups are called. They are called rookeries. So it makes it even more complicated because then you've got a. You, if, if you see a group of them flying around together, that's a parliament. We see a group of them nesting together in a tree. That's a rookery. So it's never quite straightforward. Following all around. There's, there's, there's a bit of semantics going on, isn't there? Because it's a collection of rooks is, is the parliament, but it's the actual nesting site. That's the rookery. Mm. Yes. But they're also pretty much the only bird in the Corvid segment that we feel can actually, well, a lot of the corvids, they're all named after how supposedly their call sounds. And I've definitely never heard a jay going around going, jay, jay, jay. No, or a chuff going, chuff, chuff. But a rook is the only one that seems to go, rook, 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 rook. 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 So they, are, they seem to be the only one. But they do have a lifespan of six years which is a very long time. You think how small they are? It's a very long time. And we found all the way around the UK, other than the northwest of Scotland. They haven't quite made it there yet. I'm sure they're working on it, but they haven't quite done it as of yet. Now, they also have what's called baggy trousers or shorts. Does anyone know why they're called that? Okay, big silence. Baggy trousers or shorts. Unlike crows, which don't have any. Crows don't have any. They, they have baggy trousers or shorts because there's feathers that grow down their legs. Un yeah, there we go. Someone's just got it in the chat. It's, whereas crows and the majority of the rest of the corvid family, they all have bare legs. Rooks have shorts or feathered shorts, which makes it a little bit different but they yeah. also have bare faces they have the bare faces which does make them a little bit more ugly but the ugly duckling almost but they have the bare face because when they're eating out of a carcass they don't get the feathers dirty it's a lot easier to clean if you haven't got any feathers it's a lot easier to clean because Absolutely. your feathers aren't getting dirty you haven't got to try and clean all that it's a lot lot clearer now talking of rookeries here is a video which I shot on my way home from work the other day of a rookery. Well, just before we carry on, we've just had a message through. The eagle-eyed of you will notice that, that Trevor's not here yet. Um, he should, he's been held up. He's been delayed. Um, we were had emails from him this morning, so he should be here. But uh, if he's not here, we've, we're going to dig our, out our archives and we'll get him back in as soon as possible. We don't know what's happened. Um, it's a little bit difficult. We've never had a guest uh, get delayed before, but um, we're, 
obviously in contact. We're doing what we can. It's been delayed, and uh, we will raid the archives if we need to to keep going. But I say, just keeping up the tab so that you're aware. So here is the rookery video. Yeah, it's funny how rook rookeries, they always seem to be right on a main road. So they're actually trying to get some, some nice footage without the sound of cars going rushing past. It's tricky. I so, had great fun coming home from work. And there, there's two locally to us. And one of them used to be really, really good. Um, it was booming this time of year, this rookery. Um, and then during the winter, we've had a lot of tree fall in that area. Um, so a lot of the tops of the trees have come down and a lot of it has been removed. So the rookery itself has shrunk a fair chunk in size over the winter. So it's ne it never quite picked up again this year as it has been the last couple of years. So I went to the other one on my way home from work and you wouldn't realise watching that video and it's great how good a directional mic can be because behind me about 10 metres was a very, very busy road with constant traffic doing about 50 miles an hour going past and you couldn't notice so having a directional mic sometimes does help certainly anyway one of the features that we've we put together for for this week is we were given uh, we had a lady come along before she's a friend of one of our members and what she does is she actually makes cards but she makes cards that are a little bit different and i'll show you what happens in the video but she actually makes recycled cards that have got seeds in and they have a set of instructions on them but we're going to, well we'll show you the video we can have a little chat about it afterwards but um this is what you do with cards that have got seeds in and we also had a bit of a rivalry in this as well we did yes we've got a competition going so uh nothing like a bit of father and son rivalry that's it hello We've got a rather interesting experiment we're setting up today. We received these cards. I received this one from one of our members at Christmas, and Ross received this one from one of our members on his 21st birthday. Now, these cards are a little bit unique in the fact that they're actually made from recycled paper and they've got seeds inside them. But we've been having a bit of a discussion because on them it says, use me, plant me, water me, watch me grow. But we're not entirely sure what the best way to do that is. So I'm going to, with the card I've got, I'm going to put it on the ground, peg it down and water it. And Ross is going to do it in his slightly different way. So here we go. With my card, I'm literally just going to put it in the ground. I'm going to take two pieces of metal and make them into a, a kind of pin. going to use these to hold it in place and we'll see what happens with mine now I'm planting mine a little bit differently I'm going to put mine in my hole that we prepared earlier and I'm going to bury it because to me planting digging a hole and putting it in the ground. 
So let's see who grows better. Yes. So I'd like to ask everyone, because I want to know, who do you think is going to grow better? Mine or dad's? That's what I want to know. Well, we're going to find out because, see, the reason we had the, the dispute is when you lay grass seed or meadow seed, you tend to put it on the, the surface of the ground, pat it down and water it in. But on the, say, on the, on the, on the card, it says, you know, use me plant me, water me, watch me grow. And Ross said, well, we've got to put it in the ground. The thing is, a lot of those seeds aren't designed to grow from that hole in the ground. So we thought, well, we've got two cards. Let's take the opportunity. Let's have an experiment and see what we can do. And we'll go from there. Um, so anyway, that's, that's what happens there. So as, as our speaker hasn't yet arrived, what we're going to do is, so we're going to dig out one or two videos from past member specials. Hopefully he'll be here shortly. But uh, see, one of the things we do for our members is we, for a member show, we do a guided walk. And on those guided walks, we go out and as well as including the, the actual directions to the places that you're going. So you can actually go on those walks and go out and explore them for yourselves in the countryside. And we also include features that we see. And um, we've had articles we've done as a result on buzzards and green woodpeckers, um, the old railway for Tilmiston Colliery we featured on one of them. And uh, we kind of make that whole show based on those. And what we're also gonna be doing as a result of that We've got an app that we're putting together and we're going to put all of those walks with some 360 footage and some drone footage onto the to the map, onto those maps, onto the app. We're also going to have um, a link in there so you can even go and check the weather forecast for the day that you're thinking of actually going and doing that walk. And, and we make some videos. And the one we're actually looking for at the moment, we're just downloading it as we speak. I last, the last walk we went on to was actually based from Kersney Abbey in, in Dover. And we had a slightly entertaining middle section. It was a walk I had never done when we've had this much rain. So there was uh, some sections where we had to basically navigate uh, the, the River Dower. We had a section that was very bit of a slope, but it hadn't been cleared, so it was kind of overgrown with some some holly and well we just say just going to dig out that video now we're going to show you in just a moment I think, uh, we're, uh, I think we're starting to build a bit of a rivalry in here a bit of rivalry i think there's a bit of rivalry oops. so far there's two for me two for you there's two for me and there is one for you just one but the only reason you've got that one is because that card was from that person ah so you've, you've I do I do like a little bit of favoritism, and it also I, I do agree. Your one does have to does look untidy. It does look untidy, I've, but I have watered it every day, and I also have more news because apparently the uh, the creator of these cards, um, her intention was to plant them in the ground like mine. Oh well, so, may, maybe the result of our experiment. I mean, she'll have to actually revise the way that she could, because when, when my card wins, right, and it's, it's going to because because that's the way that it should be, then we'll have to see. And one of our members as well has also um, suggested another way of doing it, how she's going to do it, We should put it in a tub. Yeah, so that's another way. A tub. What you could do with a tub, I suppose, is you've actually had it, you could make a coat, a, a, a tube out of it, and then you could plant half of it, and have half of it on the top. Yeah. Do your own experiment. We want cars. 
50-50. God. God, I've never seen a video take so long to download. So we are just filling a bit of time. But it we is. hope you're enjoying I think it. It's, I think it's like the, the kettle, isn't it? And the cup of tea. We, uh, so we, we do apologise. We've, we've never been in this situation before. So uh, we, uh, he has promised us that he's on his way and he's being held up. But uh, so we, we had emails yesterday. I suppose it's one of those situations where if you run a, uh, a rescue centre, if you get a call, you've got to go. Yeah, so this is very likely. For, for, all, for all we know, there could be some foxes that are being saved as we speak because he's gone to that Dude, rather than come here. You, I saw a fox yesterday. I was driving into Sandwich. I went in to see uh, a client and literally coming, if you go into Sandwich from the Deal Road, I was just coming up to the, the railway line and then there's a, a paddock on the left. And as I looked left, there's a fox sitting there right in the middle of the field, bold as brass, in daylight. Not bothered at all. So I think we've uh, the video's just about downloaded. So um No, it's not quite there. It's, it's still taking its a, a few minutes to download. God. Oh, here we go. Trevor is looking after weenie cubs at the moment, so you never know what emergencies may arise. Neither do we. Oh, there's a video. Oh, <laughs> there it is. In fact, it's not only arrived, it's ambushed us. Yeah. Benefits so, of, uh, of technology, shall we say. Yes. So, so this is the video. This is well, part two of the videos from our Kersney Abbey guarded walk that we did in February. Yes. So we hope you enjoy. probably just see behind me we suddenly saw this sheep in the barn so we put the dogs on the lead because even though they're pretty well behaved and we don't actually think they noticed better safe than sorry now this plant here this is gorse gorse itself should be flowering about now in the dull winter but as you can see with this one it started flowering early i'm not complaining because those bright vibrant yellow colors always help out with those dull winter days it's really nice to see everything but that's the weird thing this year is everything is out of place everything's out of order everything's flowering at different times all the birds are starting to chirp their songs a little bit early who knows why follow the road you'll go past several cottages and then you'll come to this footpath on the left hand side of the road cross over the stile and follow the field yeah Go on, Bruno. Where we just crossed that stile is actually a bit of a scramble. They haven't cleared the track for a long time. So if you're feeling you don't want to go climbing through what's effectively holly uh, and prickly, then if you carry straight on along the road where we stopped and came over the stile, you'll get to a junction, turn left, down the hill. Having just negotiated a large fallen tree and just about managed not to slide down a slope on my bottom, it's probably recommended that if you don't wish to battle with holly, climb trees, strip down slopes, that you carry on along the road and turn left. But the path comes out on that same road and now we've reached it, we're going to turn left going downhill.
As you can see, take care crossing the Auckland Valley Road because the cars do whistle through. This is a coot. You can tell coots by the white stripe on the front of their head. And this one's enjoying much more of a home than it's possibly ever had previously. Because normally this would be a field. But they're funny birds because when you actually see them out of the water, they've got these huge feet, which are really good for spreading their weight and allowing them to walk across lily pads. So next time you're out and you're at a lake and there's coots, See if you can see one walking across water, almost. So, you'll probably be aware that through January we've had a fair amount of rain. And behind me, our next obstacle is the River Dower, which has, to say the least, burst its banks. We're right in the valley, and much as it is spectacularly beautiful, We've now got to try and work out how to get over here with two dogs. One of whom is not anywhere as nimble as the other. We'll see you on the other side. So here we are, two of us and two dogs safely across the River Dower, albeit one of us has wet feet. My feet are dry, I just want to clarify, I have dry feet. Once you've crossed the treacherous river and you've come up to the summit of the vertical slope, when you get to this junction, you want to take the left turn and keep going up the hill. So we come out from the woods on the banks of the Auckland Valley and the terrain, the countryside actually changes quite dramatically. We've gone from that rugged, tree-lined, featured, natural valley to what's effectively a flat trees and hedgerows and featureless landscape which is hard. So eventually that footpath will meet a road. When you get to the road turn left and as you get to the corner where the road goes round to the right take the footpath which is by now virtually straight on.
Now as you can see, this is a little bit overgrown. We've had to move brambles, we've had to pick dogs up, we've had to climb fallen trees. But you know what, it's part of the fun. But it is one of those things that you have to be careful with when you're walking. But I tell you, we've got what we're calling an at ack and all the ter terrain attack Chihuahua, because he's got through everything. Well done, little fella. End up in the trunk. <laughs> the end of it. Well, that is a segment of one of our guided walks. There's more to that section. No, that's it. That's that's all of it. So that is all of the guided walk, uh, well, part of one of our guided walks. Now, it's, it's great, I mean, for everyone that's been here for quite a while now as well. When we look back at these videos um, and we realise how much we've changed almost. Grown. We've, we've grown. Our editing abilities have got better. There's music on the videos. So we're relying on our members here to back us up with this for anyone who's not been here before. And the current videos now, we don't have wires going between the, the camera and, and us. It's all wireless now. And it's all been upgraded. But one of the main things of the guarded walks, especially that one, uh, which was entertaining, to say the least, is we go and do it. So you get the pleasure of watching us do it. So you haven't got to do it. It's funny. Straight after, a, a day or two after we'd done that one, my sister phoned, up, phoned me up. We were having a chat. And she said, I'm told her where we've been because we went there several years ago. And just after the bit, I said the section was was a bit slippery, and my sister climbed over a, a rather large trunk, and and used me as a cushion. So we remember it quite well because it is entertaining. But uh, she said, "Oh, she says we went that way a little while ago, and they had a big sign up. You remember where we? I said, you know, we carry on down the road when the road goes to the right and the path goes straight on. But apparently there had been a sign up there saying the footpath is closed. Well." As you can see or could see, it wasn't closed on the day that we walked it. So we carried on down there and it became a bit mountainous, as you saw, and a little bit more than we might choose to do. But obviously, as the both of us are still in the prime of our lives, we climbed all obstacles. We we didn't let ourselves be, be daunted by the prospect of scrambling over trunks and uh, crossing streams and carrying on through. But just as where we got where we gave you the panorama and then we stopped, that was where we found the sign that said footpath closed. However, that footpath closed sign wasn't technically legal, should we say. It was about yay big, no bigger than your, your normal footpath sign. And it had been painted on with a paintbrush saying footpath closed. Now, if you're going to go out and do the walk, I mean, we don't condone ignoring them. They're just not legal. But, but not only that, we'd already spent 20 minutes going down the hill, climbing over all those trees and various other bits and pieces. And the idea of turning around and going back up the hill, through the stream, over the tree trunks, um, wasn't that appealing. So as we kind of know the land and we know where the footpath should be and we know where it should come out, we boldly carried onwards and even that might have been just a touch bonkers to say the least because you want to tell them the next bit well there is actually a signposted walk called the kersney loop now the kersney loop i've been out and filmed and we're just in the process of editing it all together to get it up for our members because we said that we would and we are fulfilling that but the Kersey Loop takes you completely away from that farm. It keeps you on the other side of the Orkham Valley, so it's safer. You haven't got across the Orkham Valley. It's all done on the other side of the valley. You go up the same route. It's all done, but it's a nice, shorter, more pleasant walk, should we say. 
and it doesn't mean you've got to be scrambling through things uh having an olympic swimming contest getting over the river uh finding out that you're real good at rock climbing as well on some of bits and also finding out that running down a hill where there's branches brambles logs to get over water to deal with and having two dogs and an old man to try and do it oh, it doesn't help but also after that we had to we had to negotiate four barbed wire fences uh, with with dogs now again thankfully under the barbed wire fences they had rabbit fencing and so we we were able to get over um and and we, we got out to the path where we should be and we carried on it's but it's one of those we probably would recommend at the moment that we don't you don't go out and actually check out ourselves because it's funny farmers are allowed to divert paths but they usually try and provide a diversion or otherwise but it's having if you like we've, we've done five national trails we've done the north downs way the West Highland Way, Hadrian's Wall Park. South Downs Way and the Ridgeway. So, yeah. Generally, it's something about Kent that the foot the signage is is not as good as it, it is in a lot of the other counties. And if if it was me, and I mean this is just me, and and I'd had the situation that we were in, or even if the footpath I'd want to make sure the footpath was well and truly marked. So I hadn't got people wandering where I didn't want them. But anyway, there you go. On a more chirpy note, talking of chirpy, one of the things you may have seen in that video was a buzzard. And we, we like buzzards. We like buzzards. We're, We're big very, fans. Very, very, very big fans of buzzards. And a buzzard is, it's an amazing, actually, it's an amazing message of resurgence, recovery, um, because in the 60s, Buzzards really suffered with the use of DDT and farms. I mean, um, most of our raptors really, really struggled. It was, I mean, very, very basically quickly to each individual buzzard. It wasn't a great major harm or damage. What it did was soften the shells of their eggs. And so when they gave, you know, when they actually laid the eggs, a lot of them actually broke whilst they were being laid or in the, in the nest, they weren't strong enough to hold the young chick for long enough for it to be ready to come out. So the numbers were really, really low. And that's that's horrendous because as a top predator, they're the ones who indicate how well the ground is at the bottom. Now, there is now pretty much a pair of buzzards in every available habitat in the UK, which is fantastic. And I mean, really fantastic. The, the, you know, the recovery that they have made is superb and Re certainly within Kent, we regularly see them when we go out. Uh, I've had them, we live just outside Deal, and quite often we can be sitting in the garden and we see them flying overhead, which is fantastic again. And you know, they've got, I hope he's bursting. There was actually uh, one time very lately when I took, uh, took dogs out before we were going off to do some filming when they couldn't be with us. And I got to the top of the hill because we live at the bottom of a uh, hill and there's basically hills all around. I got to the top of the hill and I rang Dad and I went, Dad, look outside the house now. And I can hear him moving, scrambling outside. He looked up and went, what, what? And I went, it's two buds. And he went, oh, I saw them about five minutes ago. They must have just come back round to you. And I'm thinking, <laughs> so we spent a lot of time trying to chase them around our back garden and the fields behind our house. But they are. We think they're a bird with a wingspan that is pretty much, if you like, hold your arms out. And that's about the wingspan of a buzzard, which is amazing, especially the females. The males are somewhat smaller. They are, I mean, and they are quite distinctly different in size. Um, all birds of prey, and buzzards very noticeably, have what they call RSSD in kind of scientific terms. And that stands for reverse size sexual dimorphism. That's a technical bit. And I, but I did some work on buzzards well on, on birds of prey when i did my degree so i can be an anorak but uh the females are much much bigger that's no definite reason that but it could be because the female needs to be bigger and more aggressive and duller colored for when she's on the nest uh, it could be so that they actually are hunting different prey so they're not competing with each other because all birds and animals have a niche 
And if that niche separates the male and female, so they're not hunting for the same thing either, that should mean that there's more available food for both of them, um, which again is absolutely cool. But it is when you actually get to see these birds circling on the thermals over our land, they are an indicator that we're getting it right, mostly on the ground, because if we weren't, anything that's in that lower part of the food chain missing would mean that we wouldn't get the birds. So for us, it's just awesome. A couple of questions. Oh. First one, are buzzards larger than kites? Yes. And they're easy to tell apart as well. If I had a gentleman the other day who swore blind, he had some red kites flying around over his house. They fly differently as well. The buzzards tend to, tend to sort of hold, sit in the air very much uh, more. They've got a very distinctive kind of shallow, kind of almost flat line to the wings when you see them coming towards you. And obviously the kite has got the forked tail, which is totally distinctive. There's only the, the red kite in this country generally that's that size with that kind of a tail. And kites, uh, wings are very much narrower and kind of not falcon-like, but getting that way. Um, and they're much more colorful. They've got grays and whites and in bold patterns on the wings, the males especially. So they are fairly distinctive. Um, and if you, I suppose if you like, the buzzard is the forward escort of birds of prey. All the rest, all the rest of them have kind of come away from that basic concept, if you like. Well, another question was, are eagles the biggest? They are the biggest. And I've also seen that someone here tonight has also helped us out and put biggest in the UK is the sea eagle, 11 foot, six inches in span. And that's in Western Scotland. They are. That's they a are. big wingspan. It's a big wingspan. Very big. I think big. there's one or two vultures possibly in other parts of the world that might, I mean, the, the Amagaya, isn't it? They call it the barn door. But um, not an expert on birds in other parts, but no, eagles are just, oh, they're all awesome. All birds of prey. And there's also been a few questions about membership. So membership. Well, can you talk you about membership? What? We should we, we'll talk about membership. We don't we the first thing we should say about membership is how much membership we, when the speak English Pollard is we thank our members. We really, really massively appreciate all our members because without without you, we can't really operate. Uh, we do our level best to keep membership as low a price as we possibly can. But thank you so much for coming on the journey with us. For anybody who isn't a member and would like to come on the journey with us, this is all about membership. So we have three different packages uh, that you could choose to purchase. The first one, the most basic one, is the four or very occasionally five shows per month. And obviously those you can come along to live or as many as you like. And you also get the members only package, which is the walk show. You also get to join our closed membership group. And that's where, because we record all our shows, if you miss a show, and unfortunately sometimes it has to happen, then all of our show recordings go into that Facebook group so you can catch up with those anytime that you like. You also get a copy of uh, my booklet, The Five Senses, which is about how we use our senses to engage with the world that is outside. Uh, that will of course be, be signed by moi and we'll get across and that costs £10 a month. Is, is our basic membership package. Uh, Ross will be putting the links in the chat so if anybody wants to click on that, that would be dead cool. But we also have two other packages. There is an associate membership package. And with that one, you get the, obviously all the Facebook brought, ugh, brain's gone dumb. You get the four broadcasts, you get membership of the Facebook group, you get the five senses, and you get the four keys. The four keys is about bringing wildlife into your garden, unlocking the web, if you like, that will help you bring life into your life but what you also get is we have when when the world opens up we'll be going out and doing outdoor experiences again as we did before we had the lockdown we also have various different products for sale 
Um, what we've got here is a bat box, um, which is handmade. They're not kind of like factory cheapies or anything else. They are a bit more expensive, but they are proper, proper slate roof. So handcrafted timber. You can tell it's a bat box because the bat, the entrance is at the bottom and they've got these ridge sections here so the bat can land on and scramble up. For the associate membership, you get 10% off all of those, anything that we sell. Oh, and we've also got here, um, we're sorry, Linda, we're still waiting for prices. We've just changed our manufacturers because the last lot haven't got back to us. But for example, we've got the beanies with our Chaffinch logo on them. We've got fleeces that have got the Simple Life Circle logo and the jackets and things that we wear can all be purchased should you wish to do so. And for the associate membership, there's a 10% discount off of anything that we sell. And we also, when we do those walks, our outdoor experiences or whatever, you get to come to one of them as an associate member, completely free of charge. You just need to bring your own food. So that's included in the package. So as associate, you get the shows, you get the Facebook group, you get two books, you get 10% off everything we do, and you get one free experience per year. Cool, and that's 15 pound for a month. We also then have the full membership package. The full membership package has obviously the shows, the Facebook group, uh, the two books. You also get the full book, The Three Year Pond. I'm in that one. He's in that one. Uh, again, we'll sign that. So you get all three books. Um, you get 15% off everything that you can purchase from us, events, experiences, but animal boxes. We've got hedgehog boxes and things. And, and the experiences. You get two free experiences a year that you can come on. And when the app is available, we mentioned it earlier, we had a meeting about that this morning. It's going that, well. That will be included in the full membership package. And the full membership package is £20 a month. Um, and you're all right there. I'm just fighting with, with my co-host for the space on the floor. Anyway, Ross has put the link in the chat. And if anybody would like to sign up, that's there. If we have your email address, then that will come out tomorrow in the follow-up email. Uh, if you've come in via the Facebook and you haven't got, we haven't got your email address, then again, send it to us through the Facebook and we'll get the link across. Um, it's a go this thing, so you sign up. And for as long as you're a member, that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, obviously, if at any time you think, oh, I've had enough of that, you want to go, we can, you know, it's, there's no catch, there's no hitch or anything else. But it would be lovely if you wanted to come along and join in our journey. Um, at, the, at the end of the day, we may be doing this to present it, but a lot of it is done around the members. What does everyone want to see? And we cater for that. I mean, for um, example. Yeah, for example, um, we were asked, could we do a little bit about spring in the garden? So last week, uh, we pretty much dedicated the entire show to the spring equinox. And the garden itself and how everything was changing and coming into life for the spring and we're also as well it's not just about being here and being part of it it's living it living in the outside world it's it's being outside and when you're outside and maybe you're walking home from the train station from uh, after a long day's work or uh you've just taken the dog out before you go to work and it's not having headphones on or earphones in, it's listening to everything going on. on. And maybe there's something you've seen and you've taken a picture of it, but you don't know what it is and you don't know how to find out and you can put it in the group and everyone in the community can help each other out and find out what it is. We, we've had toads in, go into the Facebook group today. Yes, we've, we've had, had an albino squirrel. A al photo of an albino squirrel. It's, 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 you know, it's just really, really cool. One of the things that we've been asked, and we're going to try out throughout April, is we've been asked if we can start at eight o'clock. We've had a large number of people sort of say that we're putting the kids to bed at seven and we're really struggling with seven o'clock. So we asked all our members last week and I think pretty much everyone said, well, let's give it a go, see how it get on. We've spoken to our next guest uh, for the end of April, Chris Scaife, had a chat with him yesterday. Uh, did he mind? moving to eight o'clock he said that's cool because one of his jobs he has to put the ravens to bed and we didn't want to clash with him having to put the ravens to bed 
So uh, we've even checked that one through. So we'll check it out. You know, it's, it's, a, it's very much a community thing. Uh, if you've got something that you think of as a value, uh, let's have a chat and come on the show. You know, if it'd be great. We used to have one or two people come on the show and that's still an option. We still love you to do that. Or if you've got a bit of video, please put it chart, you know, pass it across. We've had videos supplied of hedgehogs. We had one of a mouse. Yeah, um, we've had loads. We had one lady who actually did a, a little walking tour around Worth. So it, it really is a community. And if you would like to be a part of it, we'd love to have you because if you like, the more members we've got, the more we can do. Um, the, the more range we have. Now you might be ask, asking yourself, I'd love to become a member, but I don't know what's coming. Well, the guided walk for next month, we're going up to Faversham and we are walking around the... I apologise if I pronounced it wrong. The or is it or or marshes? Yeah, or marshes. We're going to do a guided walk around there. We've got Chris Scaife coming at the end of the month. He's going to come along to obviously talk to all of us about ravens. And he's got a book out by the way it's called The Raven Master. He it's has really good. And yeah, we're really excited to have him coming along. So how, how cool is that when you get to say, "I've had the Raven Master on the show." It's yeah, quite it's quite it a is. cool quite a cool moment. Uh, is, we've, we've also got plenty more amongst all of that to come as well. Conibrook Lakes, I think, is, is yeah. forthcoming. Um, there is so much on the way. We lose track so because talk, we have so much. Talking about bees soon because bees are just coming to life. But, and face it, the, the, the way that the queen bees have got to work at the moment will put most of us to shame. So we're looking to talk about bees again. Soon. They should be on the show today, but we made a tweet. We, we tried, well, trying to run around the garden, following a bee with a camera, trying to get some decent footage has been great fun. So we can only praise one of our members who in the first lockdown managed to get pictures of Jacqueline the bee. Um, I remember We're Jacqueline. not quite entirely sure how you managed to get those pictures that well um, because we've been running around the garden like headless chickens trying to chase bees for it's, the past week. I believe she's here now, so that's, that's cool. She is. Brilliant. Well, so we must be getting a bit close to the end. We have. We do apologise for Trevor not being here, um, but at the end of the day, he does run a rescue service, and if he's got if he's got more important things to do and to animals to look after, that's, there's nothing we can do about it. So we hope you've enjoyed this improvised show. Um, we will get him back on as soon as we possibly can. I'm sure that I mean he's been we've we've had that many chats and conversations with him that we're sure it's not an issue, and we'll do our level best to get him back on as soon as possible. So we do apologise. It has been a entertaining show, should we say the least. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll just pass the dad for the pass. Well, okay. final words. Final words. So we were talking at the beginning about natural law and about the fact that there is just, there is, there is a pace and there's a reason that everything happens in life. And the things that we can learn from the countryside. Well, I think one of the most important things to learn from looking at the countryside is to realize that we are not in control. We never have been in control and we never will be in control. And life tends to throw some strange things at us from time to time. Things don't always work out the way we'd like. But if you like, I think one of the keys to managing our way through this crazy world that we're in is to remember three that you can only control three things yeah one is what you think second is what you say and the third thing is what you do so what i try and do by golly i'm nowhere near perfect my wife will agree when things happen that you don't like or you're not entirely happy about if you accept them that's obviously what you think and then act accordingly then it's an awful lot easier to be a happy bunny than a miserable cod, for want of a better phrase. I was thinking of the advert then. But yeah, it is. It's a lot easier to be happy. And remember, the best place to make those decisions and do your thinking is outside in the countryside. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming along tonight. We look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Thank you. <laughs>